Hi, welcome to another Sunnyside Design tutorial today. We're excited to share our project with you today. Last week we went um, looking for some inspiration for spring. We were just ready for spring, tired of this winter, and we went to Pottery Barn and we were fell in love with their pots, their vases that they had that were very um, aged, vintage looking, Weather, looked like warm. handmade. They were cool. They were really cool. So we came home inspired and ready to try that on something and we happened to come across a tutorial from Lucy at Craftberry Bush and we loved her tutorial and so we grabbed the supplies and decided to try it for ourselves. And what we did is she was making pots with it and she, we decided to make one. So this is the pot that we made and this is using a glass vase that you yeah. just get from the florist kind of find at the thrift store and it we were just so amazed at the look that we got on this and so we decided that after we made the pot we would try it on some ceramics so we yeah, went like to a piece of home decor yeah so what we did is we were looking for something for spring easter and we found a uh Sunny like bunnies. yeah a ceramic bunnies from the thrift store. And um, we just used that technique on those and we are so excited to share that with you today. Let me just kind of go over the supplies that we're going to use. You're gonna need some plaster. There's Plaster of Paris. This is actually a different brand. It's called Perfect Plaster, but it works works great. It worked great. We'll need some fine sand. Um, this just came from the craft store, I yeah, think, Michaels. right? We already had that on hand. We already had this on hand, too. We it was did, a leftover actually. scouting project. Um, you'll want some cold water. And I found that it was to keep it cool while we're working on this. I just, just put some ice, ice. Just yeah. some ice in there so it stays cool. And you'll just need an old bucket for mixing and a spoon. We initially used plastic spoons. And they kept breaking. They kept breaking. So just use a regular spoon. Or maybe like a mixing thing you get at the paint store. Oh yeah, stir stick. Stir stick. Stir stick. It. <laughs> um, it cleans off your silverware yeah. just fine. Um, but just a, a bucket or something to mix in and that is all you need. Yeah. So stay tuned and we'll show you how we created our faux stone uh, ceramic bunny. Yeah, super fun. To begin with, place um, some of the plaster mixture in a mixing bucket. You'll want to work in small batches with this, maybe about a half a cup of plaster to one or two tablespoons of sand. Once you've got the plaster in, you can add your sand and then start adding your water. You want to add the water gradually. You don't want it to get too runny, but you want to stir it until it has the mixture of about a creamy frosting. Then you're going to begin to um, place it, apply it to the ceramic piece. We just used a spoon to um, apply it to the bunny and then we're using fingers. I used my fingers to just kind of smooth it around. Your initial coat is going to be kind of thin. You just want to cover all areas of the bunny. And you'll just keep adding and um, placing it on the bunny, getting it in all the little crevices all the way around. Um, it, it will start to harden a little bit in one area. I worked on just the bottom section of the bunny first, um, so I had a place to hold on to it. Um, I will say that you really do want to, as you mix this plaster up, is work in small batches. I found that um, it dries really quick, and I hadn't used up everything in my bucket, and I had to um, throw out some of it because it had began to harden. Once it's covered on the entire bunny area, you can see now I'm working on the ears. Um, I was able to set it down and I could apply the rest of the plaster all the way around. Um, once it's completely covered and it's starting to set up a little bit, then I just pressed down the plaster against um, the ceramic bunny, just kind of making sure it's adhered all the way around the bunny. At this point, you want to look and see if it's a little thin in spots or you've missed some spots. As I did this, I noticed that it was a little thin on the back side of the bunny. So I'm going to just apply a little bit more along the back end there and just kind of push it in with my thumbs, pressing that plaster in so that it is completely covered. This will to totally cover and take care of my first coat. 
Now you'll want it to be dry to the touch before you start your second coat. So I'm mixing up a second batch here of uh, plaster and I'm going to start to spread it on to get a second coat over the entire bunny surface. You'll want to cover the entire surface again using the same method, applying it with a spoon, smoothing it out with my fingers. And I'll continue to do this until the entire surface is covered with a second coat of this plaster material. This really is a fun project to work on. You do kind of feel like you're a potter or a sculptor, even though we're just covering an existing piece with the, the plaster, but it kind of feels that way. It's really quite, quite fun to work on. So um, I'm going to continue to apply until the entire surface has a second coat of plaster on it. And then um, I'm just going to kind of press it in, make sure it's all nice and snug on there. Um, I'm going to work in some areas that was a little bit rough and just kind of smooth it out with a little bit of plaster. This really is a fun project. It, you know, you get dirty with your hands, and but it is fun to just sit there and watch it transform into something that is really quite amazing. I'm so amazed at the way this looks like when it's completed. Um, you really get that sense of age and rustic feeling on it. So I just continue to smooth and make sure that I've got it covered the way I want it to. Once it is almost hard, it's not all the way hard, I just took some water um, and just kind of rubbed it with my fingers, just smoothing out that surface a little bit more. Now it's not going to be smooth. This is going to be rustic, but I wanted to kind of um, knock down with the water any points or jagged edges that remained as I um, was uh, working on it. So I just took this water and rubbed it over the entire bunny. Once I had the bunny covered the way I wanted to with the plaster, I let it completely dry. I actually just let it dry overnight before the painting process. Now I chose to use three different colors of gray paint on this bunny. I kind of wanted to mimic the look of granite. So I began with a light gray paint and I applied it with a paintbrush. And then I took a damp coffee filter and just kind of dabbed the paint a little bit, pushed the paint around so it was a little bit um, watered down, a little bit, not, not really watered down, but it kind of um, left some white areas showing through. So I had the gray with a little bit of white. So I just um, started to apply that light gray paint over the entire surface of the bunny and then taking that coffee filter damp coffee filter and just dabbing it all the way around the bunny. Once again, this is another fun part. You get to be a little bit creative of how you're going to apply the paint to make it look the way you would like it to. When we did the vase, um, we used more tans and browns and I thought the bunnies maybe would be funner, more gray, um, gray toned. And so I, I chose to use the medium gray. Um, and I, I did that all the way around the entire surface. Once the entire surface of the bunny was coated with the light gray paint, I brought in a medium gray color and I dabbed it here and there. I just wanted to add a little bit of um, definition by adding in a little bit of a darker toned gray paint here and there. And I used the same method. I used the paintbrush to dab it on and then I used the damp coffee filter to kind of smooth out the color, kind of blend it in, so that I got variations in color of grays. Once I had the gray how I wanted it to be, I used a mossy green color. I wanted it to look like it had been out in the weather and was a little bit, um, had the moss growing on it, a little bit weathered. So I would apply that little bit of green here and there. I did most of the green um, towards the bottom edge. And then I took the damp coffee filter and again blotted it, smoothing it in, feathering in that color. Most of the green, again, was in the bottom. I did put a little bit up on the ears and on the nose, so just to have that little bit of green aged look upon the bunny. The next color I added to the bunny was a dark charcoal gray. 
And my intent with this was to place that dark color in some of the little crevices that the plaster made um, so that it, it looked like a darker, darker deep color in those crevices. So I applied it again the same way, using the paintbrush to dot it into those little crevices and then using the damp coffee filter to feather out the color and give me a little more definition, um, a little more dimension to the bunny. And this is what the bunny looked like, applying the three coats of gray paint and the green paint. Now I have one final color I would like to add to the bunny, and that is a little bit of white highlight. This is a soft white, it wasn't a bright white, a little bit off white. Um, and again, I used my same technique. I'm just dabbing on the color here and there where I would like highlights to be and um, using that damp coffee filter again to feather out the color and kind of blend it in. And as I did that, I noticed there was a few other spots that I wanted to add a little bit more of that dark charcoal color. So I did that again, um, added a few more spots of dark along with the white highlights blending, patting, getting it just the way I wanted it to be. My weathered stone look bunny is now complete and I am thrilled with the way this turned out. I hope you'll give this technique a try as well. It is really fun to do. All right, here are the finished bunnies. Aren't they adorable? Just they love were the way they turned out. So fun to make. We kind of felt like we were in a pottery class. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that we inspired you to create your own pieces of faux stone decor for your home. If you would like to see more videos from us, be sure to subscribe with that button below and make sure to tap that bell notification so that you will know when new videos are released. Um, also follow us down in the links below to you can follow us on social media our website so you never miss any of our projects and as always here at Sunnyside Design we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.